Hey everyone, this is Avilas back here again from Selenium Express and today in this tutorial I'm going to talk about the difference between the interface and abstract class. This is a very popular interview question and uh, doesn't matter you are a fresher or doesn't matter you are an experienced guy but 90% of time you are going to get this question in your interview. So let's go for it and let's talk about it in a brief. Alright, so now let's discuss about the difference between the interface and abstract class. So if we talk about this interface, right, I have created a very simple interface called A. And if we talk about this interface A, this is presented by this keyword called interface, isn't it? So whenever you are creating an interface, that interface should be preceded by this keyword called interface. And similarly, whenever you are creating any abstract class, let's say this A is the abstract class over here, right? And this class should be preceded by the keyword called abstract. So this is a very common difference. So whenever you're creating an interface, you have to keep in mind that that interface should be preceded by this keyword called interface. And whenever you are creating an abstract class, you have to keep in mind that that abstract class, I mean that class should be preceded by this keyword called abstract, isn't it? So it's a very common thing. So now let's talk about when should we go for interface and when we should go for abstract class. So let's understand this. Alright guys, so now let's understand when should we go for abstract class and when should we go for an interface, okay? So now let's say, let's understand it this way. Let's say you want to build an app. Let's say this is an app, okay? You want to build this app and let's say this is an employee app. Let's say EMP app, right? And whenever you want to build this app, you want two methods to be there inside this particular app. Let's say you want a method called get salary info and you want a method over here called get EMP info, right? So you want these two methods to be present inside your app, right? So now let's say, here what is happening. You know that you are going to develop these two methods, right? But you don't know the implementation. You don't have any logics right now. You don't know how to develop it. What you know is that you are going to develop these two particular methods, right? You only know the method name. You, don't, you only know the specification, right? So in that case, you need to go for interface. So now let's say, here in this case, I have two methods, right? Get salary info. So I can write a method over here. So let's say if this interface is my employee interface, let me write it employee over here. So my interface name is EMP. So now I, I do have two methods over here. Let's say get salary info. And I have another method that says get EMP info. Alright, and you know that all the interface method is by default public and abstract, right? So I don't need to write that it by default public and abstract and it's by default public and abstract. So what we understand from here is that whenever you only know the specification but you don't know the implementation, you don't know how to develop this particular methods, you don't have any uh, logics right now in your mind, at that time you can go for interface, alright? So now let's say when you should go for abstract class, okay? So now let's say if you talk about this particular method, you know the implementation of one method. Let's say you know how to calculate the salary info or how to create this particular method called salary info. But you really don't know how to create this particular method called get employee info. So you know the partial implementation, right? You know how to develop this method. So you only know how to create one method, but you don't know how to create this particular method. So the thing is, the implementation is not so clear for you, right? But you know the partial implementation. At that time, you should go for abstract class. So let's say, right now, you know this particular method, how to develop it, okay? So let's say you have this method called get salary info. And you know how to develop it. So it has a body, let's say, and you have something over here, some code over here you've written, 
right? So this is the implementation part. And let's say you have an another method. Let's say get employee info, right? And you really don't know how to develop this particular method, right? So this is an abstract method because it doesn't have a body, right? I have given the semicolon number here. So let's say this method is my abstract method. So I can write over here that public and abstract. Because this method, I'm not providing any body for this method, right? I don't know the implementation for this particular method, right? So I have to make it abstract, right? So this method is abstract, but here I have given the implementation. So this is a concrete method, right? So the thing that we understand from here is that an abstract class can contain both concrete method and abstract method, right? Okay, uh, so if you talk about right now, if you talk about the interface, right, the people or the person or anybody who is going to implement your interface, they need to going to provide the implementation for all your methods, right? So if you talk about right now, you have two different methods over here. Somebody, let's say somebody uh, has a class, let's say class A, and if you need to implement your interface, let's say A implements let's say A implements EMP, then he need to override all these particular methods, right? He need to provide the body for all your methods, right? And similarly, if we talk about the abstract class, let's say if I have a class called X, and if I am extending this particular class A over here, so I have to write X extends A, right? And inside this, I have to give the implementation for all the abstract method. So if you talk about this particular class called A, then I do have one abstract method, right? Which is get employee info. So if my X class is extending the A class, then I need to provide the implementation for this particular abstract method, right? So I need to override this particular method over here and I need to give it a body, right? And we have discussed that in our abstract class tutorial, right? Okay, so what we understand from here is that you have to go for interface when you only know the specification, but you don't know the implementation. At that time, you have to go for interface. But if you talk about the abstract class, then you have to go for the abstract class when you know the partial implementation. You know some methods implementation, right? But not the all. At that time, you have to go for abstract class. Then the methods, what you don't know the implementation, you can make it abstract. So that when somebody is extending your class, he has to provide the implementation for those particular methods, right? So, okay, so now let's talk about an, another difference. And this is really, really important. Let's say your interviewer may make you confused. He may ask you some confusing questions like this. Let me remove this thing. Okay, so now let's say that your interviewer may ask you this. Okay, so this is your interface, right? So if you know that from Java 1.8 version, we can actually write a functional interface. And functional interface means, you know, we can put the functions inside our interface, right? So if you talk about this particular method, let's say get employee info. If I want, I can give it a body, right? I can uh, put some implementation over here and I can make this method default method. So let's say this is my default method, right? So if you talk about the default method inside interface, by using the default method, you can give the body to a method inside an interface. So from the above 1.8 person, you actually can have concrete method and abstract method inside your interface, right? So now let's understand. So let's say if your interface can have concrete method and abstract method inside it, and your abstract class is also having the concrete method and the abstract method inside it, then what is the difference? And when should you go for abstract class and when should you go for interface? So this is, this is kind of same, right? So when should we go for abstract class and when should we go for interface? So let's understand that. So now let's say, if you talk about interface, right? So let's say if I have a class called, so let's say if I have a class called A, right? I can implement, if I'm implementing this interface, let's say EMP. So if I, let's say my class A implements EMP, then that's fine, right? This works fine. And let's say if I do have another interface, right? So I do have another, another interface, let's say um, EMP1, all right? So I can just put a comma over here 
and can make it EMP1, right? So my one class can implement any interface, right? Any number of interface. There is no problem with that, right? But if you talk about here, the abstract class, you cannot write, let's say, uh, if you have a class called, uh, let's say, X. And now let's say this X class is extending this A class, right? So I can say X extends A, right? And now let's say, if I have another abstract class called B, and I want to extend that abstract class also over here with my A class. So can I do that? Can I say X class extends A comma B? It's not possible. Why? Because Java does not support multiple inheritance. So if you talk about interface, by using interface, we can achieve multiple inheritance, right? But if you talk about abstract class, by using abstract class, we cannot achieve multiple inheritance, right? So that's the Another difference that you have to understand, you can implement any number of interface you want, but with abstract class, if you are extending to abstract class, you can only extend to one abstract class. You can extend to only one class at a time, not more than that. Okay. So this is one of the another difference between the interface and abstract class, right? So if somebody is asking you why to go for abstract class and why to go for interface, then you have to tell this point, right? So let's go for another one. Okay, so now let's talk about an another difference and this time I'm going to talk about the variables, all right? The variables inside the interface and the variable inside an abstract class, okay? But before that, let me remove all these stuffs, right? All right, so now let's take some variable inside my interface, okay? So if I'm taking a variable over here, let's say uh, int i, okay? And if I'm taking a variable over here inside the abstract class as well, let's say int i, all right? Then what is the difference? So if we talk about the variables inside the interface, all the variables are by default public, static, and final. So all the variables of interface is by default public static final. Even if you are not writing anything over here, the JVM is going to automatically make it public static and final, right? But what about the variables inside the abstract class? So the abstract class variables modifier can be anything. There is no such restriction with this, all right? You can make it public, you can make it private, you can make it anything. Any valid modifier you can put it before the variable of abstract class, all right? So this is uh, one more differences, right? The di variables inside the interface should be public static final. The variable inside the abstract class should not be public static final. I mean, it can be anything, right? So there is no such restriction, all right? So you can make anything that you want. But now here, a very important question arises. So let's understand that. All right, so here I can see, if we talk about the variables inside an interface, right? So this variable is by default final, is public static final, right? And if you are writing a final variable, and if you are not initializing it, the compiler is going to complain, right? So whenever you are writing a variable inside an interface, you should initialize it. So in this case, I can in initialize to anything, right? So let's have 10, right? So the initialization is compulsory if you talk about interface. But if you talk about abstract classes, you, you may not initialize it, you may initialize it, it's up to you, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so this is one of the another differences if we talk about the variable of interface and variable of password class. All right, so now let's understand one of the another most important difference between interface and an abstract class. So the difference is, the interface cannot have any constructor within it, but the abstract class can have a constructor within it. Now let's understand why. Okay, so if you want to get the, all the details about it, then you can check a link on the description. I have, I have already made another tutorial for that. You can go and watch that over there. But, but here, let's understand it in a simpler way, okay? So if you talk about the interface, right? So the, all the interface variables are by default static, right? So we know that when we need a constructor, 
We need a constructor whenever we need to initialize the variables. Which variables? The non-static variables, right? So whenever we want to initialize the non-static variables of a class, at that time we should go for the constructor, isn't it? So you put a code over here inside the interface, there is no non-static variables are there, right? And we need the constructor for that, isn't it? But if you talk about the abstract classes, here we have non-static variables, right? And I can initialize these non-static variables whenever I'm creating the object. And I can initialize this non-static variable when I'm creating the object of the, um, you know, the implemented subclasses, right? So what I mean by that, I can put a, suppose my class name is A over here, I can, I can put a constructor over here like this, right? I can make it public or something, right? So I can write a constructor inside an abstract class, but I cannot write any constructor within the interface. Right. All right. So just understand one thing that you cannot create any object both for interface and abstract class. Right. You just cannot create any object for it. So a lot of people think like they can create object for abstract class indirectly. Let me tell you that by directly or indirectly, you just cannot create any object for abstract class. Just think, think about it. Okay. Abstract class doesn't have any implementation. Right. So it's partially, it's partially implemented, you can say. So if it is partially implemented, that means it doesn't have a complete implementation. So if the, so if this class is abstract and doesn't have a complete implementation, how can you create an object for that? So this thing you have to keep in mind that for abstract class and interface, you cannot create any object, right? So these are the few differences between interface and abstract class that I want to cover in this tutorial. If you know any other differences, you can comment that below in the comment section and I'll be glad to read that. So this is it for today and uh, this is not in goodbye. I'll see you somewhere in my later video. And for that, please do subscribe to my channel. And till then, happy coding.